Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle taking on today two reels that came in out of that flea market uh, or Facebook marketplace uh, video that I did. They're both Silster reels and uh, they were both made in Korea and uh, my guess is probably late 70s or 80s uh, just based on the technologies here. One is a size 35, the 2035, the other is slightly bigger, the 2040 uh, and interestingly enough um, we have the spools uh, on the wrong ones. How do you like that? So the 2035 is on that and the 2040. And a lot of times the reels are identical other than the spool capacities. So uh, you'll see that a lot uh, between a 30 and a 40 size type of a reel. So at any rate, I'm going to take one of these apart to show you how this uh, reel was made. And um, this is one of those companies I just can't find any information to speak of in terms of company history. Um, I do know that uh, I, from what I've seen on some internet searches and the like that the, um, the company uh, was very uh, busy in Europe uh, and that uh, it was reformed a couple of times but that uh, apparently it was a group of equipment distributors who wanted to get kind of a, a store brand or a shop brand sort of thing and uh, so they contracted for these to be done. But there's two real companies out there, Silstar being one of them and Pinnacle, today's modern Pinnacle. I just can't find any information. That uh, You go to a, a website, you can't even find where the company headquarters is or uh, even contact information at that part. Most of the time with uh, Pinnacles in particular, they'll just tell you to bring it back to the retailer. So that's always an indication to me that uh, there's um, their job lotted and that the parts are not available and things like that. Okay, so we'll start stripping this reel down. We'll take the uh, uh, drag knob tensioner off. We'll take the spool off. This uh, should just be a uh, clip kind of a thing. I don't see a nut here. So there should be a clip under here that's going to hold the rotor on. We'll get to that. Uh, we'll take the side plate off. I just removed the, the side plate screws there. So let's see if we can't just pull that off. And uh, what we have inside is a basic reel, nothing too fancy going on here. We have the axle shaft, we have a pin holding the axle shaft, and then we have a cross wind block that's riding on a stud on the main gear, and then we have the main gear and the pinion gear intersecting to turn the rotor. So pretty much a basic uh, reel. We're just going to clean this one up, put a little bit of lube on it and put it back together uh, the way it uh, should. And then I'm, uh, I'm going to give this one away. I'm going to give both of these away. These are not in the wheelhouse for uh, the types of reels that I resell. Uh, these came as part of that bigger uh, deal uh, with the 15 or so reels. Uh, this will make some kid happy somewhere. So I just pulled the pin out that holds the crosswind gear and the axle shaft. So now I can remove that axle shaft. It's got a lot of junk on it, so I'm just going to wipe that down first. And uh, it seems like it might be a little rough, so I'm going to use 4-0 steel wool. It's the finest of the steel wools out there, just to kind of take it off. Now, we got tarnish on here. Tarnish never hurts anything, but if you had corrosion, pitting, things like that, it does. So just be careful when you, when you test and examine this. Okay, with that off then, here's your cross wind block. Notice the orientation on the cross wind block. There's a bump on the bottom that's not on the top. You want to make sure that when you reinstall, that's the way it gets reinstalled. Uh, if you put it upside down, you're going to have a high point or a low point to that. So just be careful there. And actually, I like to clean these things off while I can. And I'm noticing the downside of the cross wind block after I remove the uh, grease has an angular cut on it, so that'll be a key to uh, how to reinstall. Now, I'm paying attention mentally, and I'm not that good all the time. Uh, so, some of the things you might want to consider as you're doing this is to uh, take pictures along the way. Now, I'm taking pictures here with the video, but you can use a, uh, a camera. Uh, digital or otherwise, phone, doesn't matter. But take pictures at critical joints, that'll tell you um, where you need to go if you get lost in the reassembly process. All right, there's a U-clip under here. Might be a little difficult to get out, but that's uh, that's how you're going to remove the rotor. That's the clip. And then you can pull the rotor assembly out. And there's nothing much going on under here. What I did was I just wanted to check here 
to make sure that there wasn't any kind of dirt and grime and junk that might uh, inhibit the, the action of the reel. This is also where your bail uh, trip is. There's a ramp up here on the reel that's going to push this lever back. Uh, when engaged, it'll slide up here and push that back. Nothing going on. It's a good time now to just take a look at the uh, the pinion gear that drives the rotor. This is in some pretty good shape. There's a little bit of, of accumulated dry grease down here. You can pick that out with an awl or something. Overall, it's in pretty good condition. So I'm just going to grab some fishing reel grease. In this case, I'm using uh, pen precision reel grease. Doesn't matter which reel grease you use, just make sure it's a grease that's designed for fishing reels. I'm just going to put this right back together again uh, because there's nothing much going on there. So we'll just uh, take the time to grease that up. And while we're at it, I removed the handle so we should be able to slide the main gear out now. And you can't get this main gear out if you're doing the uh, without removing the rotor. So don't try and do any kind of craziness in terms of pulling a reel like this. And this isn't the only reel that has this design. There's a lot of them out there. Uh, I know that I've taken Zebcos and Ryobis and, uh, and other reels apart that almost look identical to this. Uh, so make sure that if you don't see a nut on the top of the rotor, uh, make sure you come underneath, check for that U-clip, and then uh, you can uh, go ahead and remove it that way. All right, there's nothing going on on the back. The shaft is nice and clean. And again, if you had any questions, you could take that 4 row and polish it up a little bit. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of grease. You don't want to over grease these things, but just a light coating of it is fine. We're going to reinstall that. Now when you go to reinstall that, make sure that the anti-reverse dog is set to the off position. Uh, this one has that little lever underneath that moves it. If I kept it in like that, I wouldn't merge into the, uh, the teeth that uh, is going to form that anti-reverse function. So put that anti-reverse into the open position or off position. And then I'm just going to kind of hold that main gear in place by putting the handle back on. And then next up what I'll do is I'm going to reinstall the rotor. And I'm going to grab that U-clip. Uh, it's going to hold the rotor in place. Oops, see I lost the, lost the little brass piece that goes on the bottom of the rotor. So that's probably a good place to tell you to uh, be careful with your your work. Work on a clean environment. Don't try and uh, overwork a uh, uh, an area. And uh, if you do get uh, something like that drop, you can be able to find it pretty easily. Okay, so we'll put that back, put the U-clip back now. And then we're down to the main gear, and again, it's a simple reel. There's not a lot of moving pieces and parts on this. There are no ball bearings in this reel, but you know what? For a, uh, a lighter weight reel, it's, uh, it's fine. Okay, now we mentioned that there's an angular part that goes down on the cross wind block, so let's put that down. We're going to take our axle shaft. You're going to line that hole. That hole has to line up with the hole in the cross wind block. If you have any trouble, use a pin. In this case, it's a carpenter's all just to, to line that up. You can take that little uh, centering pin that uh, belongs to the reel now. We can put that in. And if it doesn't go exactly the way it should, just kind of move it a little bit left and right, and generally it'll work. All right, so that's the inside assembly, and that's working nice and smooth. I'm going to put the cover back on, and we'll go up top and just put a couple drops of oil on that bale. But overall, a nice reel. This was on the lower end. I don't, I guess you would call them budget reels. Um, there's not a lot of technology inside of this one, but overall it's a nice little reel. It's going to make some kid happy, and I'll be happy to, to give it to him. As I mentioned, I didn't buy that uh, Facebook fishing reel lot for the, this particular reel. It just happened to be in there. Both of these happened to be in there. So uh, that's why they wound up here. I probably wouldn't pay any attention to this if I was out um, walking a flea market or 
garage sale or something, I probably would leave it right there unless I just uh, had a particular kit in mind that could use a fishing reel, at which point I would probably uh, buy it and do just what I'm doing here. Okay, I'm not going to take the bail assembly off. It's working. Just a little drop of oil behind it. Drop of oil on the, uh, the level uh, the line guide and just make sure it turns and flips accordingly. I mentioned when we started this that these uh, spools are backwards. So I'm going to go grab the spool for the 35 and put it on the 35 now. And that's it. So that's the Silster uh, 2035 ET. And uh, if you have one of these, um, you're going to find that it's pretty easy to maintain. You just saw how to do that here. And uh, I would encourage you to uh, take care of these reels. They'll last. They're, they will do what they were built to do and what they were purchased to do. This is, there's no question in my mind, you can grab a, an 8 or a 10 pound bass and, uh, and bring that in with this particular reel. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, if you did, please like it and subscribe. Uh, subscribers are key to growing my channel. So uh, please stay tuned for more to come. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.